So now let's move on to question number three in this series regarding the chapter transformation. So again, here we have a graph or a diagram with shape triangle A and triangle B. Now part one, describe fully the single transformation that maps A onto B. So pretty easy. If you observe, it is very obvious, right? If you just do that, bam, you can see that it is a reflection in the line of x-axis. This is the x-axis, so it will be what? Let's write this down. First thing first, it is a reflection, right? Reflection in the x-axis. So this is pretty easy. So you get your first mark here, reflection, and then second mark will be the line of reflection. This is why you have two marks. Okay, that is part A. Now for part B, Triangle A is mapped onto triangle C by a rotation of 90 degrees. Anticlockwise will be in this direction, about 1, 1. Okay, so again, we have two ways of solving this question. One is by using the graph directly, right? And the other way is by calculation. So we can try both again if you want to. Let's do that. So first thing first, point is 1, 1. 1, 1 is right here. It will be uh, anticlockwise, 90 degrees. Let's see. So this point, since it is on the point of rotation, it will not change. It will be the same thing. Now, this point will become, have to go this way, right? It will be this one, right? And this point has to become this one. That makes sense. Now we have to join them to form the triangle C for that. Question part B. So this is done by just observation and oh, and trying out to see how do you rotate this by 90 degrees. You'll have a shape like that. So that's why we can, we can kind of confirm it should be in this direction. So we have to label this as your triangle uh, C. Right. This is uh, part B. But of course, um, as I've explained before, um, I always like to check with calculation so I can be sure that my answer is okay. So. How would you do that? So again, the same concept applies here. The idea is that matrix times object is equal to image, right? Now, matrix here is a rotation anticlockwise, and the center is now again, it is not zero, zero. So it is a long process, but it is what it is. We gotta do to check the answer. So the object is A, and the image we're trying to find is C. So let's begin with writing down the values of A, or the points of A. So as we have seen, A from the diagram is the point 1, 2. So this is 1, 1, 4, 1, and 2, 2. So let's write this down. The point is 1, 1. We have 4, 1, and then 2, 2. Now, because, again, the center is not 0, 0, we have to first minus that from from here right because we cannot use this formula with a center which is not zero zero so we have to minus it that's the first step so one minus one is zero that will be three and that will be one that will become zero zero and one that is the values that we have to work with pretend that this is a so we can use our equation so now the matrix, how do we derive the matrix if you don't memorize it, for example, again, the same thing as we have done before, you have to think about the axis. Okay, this is my X and the Y right here. Now you will begin with this point as always, this is the first point we care about, the point one zero. And then we care about this one, it is zero, one. Of course, we have to label the other one as well. This will be uh, 0 minus 1, and this will be minus 1, 0. Okay, so now anticlockwise will be in this direction, right? So let's find the matrix. So first we begin with this point. Now if you rotate this anticlockwise 90, this will become this point. So this is my resulting point. Now we look at this one. If you rotate anticlockwise 90, you become this point. That will be my resulting point. 
So this matrix right here represents rotation of 90 degrees anticlockwise. So now we can use our formula, which is matrix times object is image. So multiply by this fake A. For now, that will give you what? That will give you, so that will be a zero, and that will be a zero, and minus one, and that will be um, zero, three, and one, right? So we just do rows by column. 0 times 0 plus minus 1 times 0, that will be 0. So this is how you multiply matrix. I hope you know how to do this at least because it is very useful for these kind of questions. Now, finally, you have to add back the center that you have minus in the first place. It will be 1, 1, 0, and this will become 1, 4, 2. Now let's check if that is okay. The first point here is 1, 1, that was 1, 1, good. 1, 4, that was 1, 4, good. And then we have 2, 0, that will be, so 0, 2, not, this is 0, 2, so 0, 2, so it's good. So we confirm that by matrix calculation. This is indeed the right shape we must have on the diagram. That is definitely helpful for you to be confident in your answer. Now let's move on to part C of the question. Now we have triangle A is mapped onto triangle D by a single transformation P. Now the transformation P is given by this, okay? Now describe fully the transformation P. So there's two ways of doing that. So usually uh, by observation, you will know exactly. If you do many, many questions, you know already this is what transformation it is. But obviously you don't need to do that. You can always find out the shape of the of the triangle D first, and then determine what is that transformation. So use this same formula right here. So matrix time object, so matrix is two, zero, zero, two. Object is the point, is a triangle A, as you can see here it is, one, one, four, one, two, two. And that will give you what? That will give you two, eight, four, two, two, four. So let's plot this diagram. Let's see what do we have. So we have 2, 2, will be this one. And we have A2, this one, and then 4, 4 will be right here. As you can see, the shape of the triangle has changed. It has become larger. So in that case, you can conclude by elimination that this has to be a, an enlargement. That's the first step that we have. So this is D. So that's the good first step. We have seen this has to be an enlargement. That's the first thing. And then to define enlargement, we need to find the scale factor and the center of, of uh, the, the enlargement. Now, this one is obviously, since you were able to use the matrix multiplication, we know the center has to be 0, 0. And the scale factor, let's have a look. It was 1, 2, 3. It became 1, 2, 3. 4, 5, 6, so the scale factor has to be, has to be 2. Okay, now because obviously because the center is not between those two shapes, it should be somewhere over here, right? If you want to test, you connect this point with the corresponding point, it will go in this direction, right? That makes sense. And then this connect to this, they will meet at the center. Of course, use a ruler, you will see they will meet right here. So this is your center of enlargement. And the scale factor has to be 2, given by the diagram. So the main idea is that is if you see a matrix like this, it is good to know if you have a matrix in the form of k, 0, 0, k, right? This one has to be the scale factor of k. This is 2, so it was 2. And you know this has to be an enlargement. If you ever see a matrix like this, you know that it is an enlargement. And this k is the scale factor. So this is question number three in this series. I hope that was helpful. I will leave a link down below for question number four.